Okay, uh, this is the lecture uh, eight of uh, statistics in SPSS course, uh, and the main goal of this lecture is to show how to apply analysis of variance, uh, one of the technique uh, which is uh, very often applied in social sciences, uh, especially uh, in psychology. Uh, this is maybe the most frequently used technique uh, at all. Uh, before we start to analyze real data examples, uh, I will give you uh, some theoretical insight uh, uh, to know uh, for which variables uh, we can uh, use this technique uh, and also uh, to understand uh, the scene behind uh, this technique. It means uh, to understand some formulas. Don't be afraid, we will not apply directly formulas. Uh, we will present all this stuff by pictures. So, first of all, uh, the name of the technique itself, uh, analysis of variance, uh, seems that we will be discussing about variances uh, in some groups, uh, but as you will see in a few minutes, uh, the main goal of analysis of variance, and it seems uh, quite strange uh, for the first side, uh, is to compare means. So if we go back into previous lectures, uh, we try to compare uh, mean uh, for two independent groups by so-called uh, two independent sample t-test. And analysis of variance is only generalization of this technique. Uh, so it means it helps you to understand whether means in more than two groups, so it means three or more, uh, are the same or not. Uh, so, uh, if uh, we rephrase uh, these sentences uh, in different way, we can say that analysis of variance is only slightly complicated uh, to independent sample t-test for the case if we have more than two group uh, in one data analysis. So, uh, here it is uh, described in detail. So, the main goal is to find differences in means but the logic behind and formulas behind try to analyze, it means divide uh, variance into two parts, as you will see in a few charts. First of all, we should mention that in SPSS and all other software packages, you can find many procedures uh, that are called analysis of variance. And there is a variety of different pro uh, procedures. We will treat only the easiest step from this, and we will discuss only about so-called one factor or one way analysis of variance. So we will divide our cases into groups only by one variable, and this variable, which is dividing data into groups, is usually called uh, as factor in analysis of variance. So here are some pictures that can help us uh, to understand why analysis of variance is called, that it is analysis of variance, but the main goal is to compare means. On the left side of this picture, you can see so-called ideal case A. So here are different values for the first group, second group, the third group. And as you can see, these values for these three groups, it means there are heights uh, on a vertical axis, are all the same. So it means that if you would like to find average or mean here, it would be approximately here, here, and here. So all these are the same. So here is a statement that there is no difference in means for this picture. And also, as you can see, uh, the variance, it means differences between individual values in different groups are quite huge one. For ideal case B, uh, the situation is totally different. You can see that individual values in the first group, second group, and the third group are quite concentrated. It means variance inside groups in comparison with ideal case A are quite small one. And as you can imagine, if I would find average or mean here for the first group, here for the second group, and here for the last one, they are increasing 
and they doesn't seem to be the same. So according to my opinion, and here's the statement below this picture, there is big difference in means. And we slightly try to discover also what is behind, so about uh, variance, uh, story about variance, and we will uh, continue with this discussion uh, in following slides. So here are two sources of variance on this slide and next one slide. First part of the variance can be named as the same group variance. It means variance inside groups here, 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 or for the uh, ideal case, uh, three uh, ellipses here. So you can see that for the first ideal case A, there is quite big differences for individual values inside groups. So it means the same group variance is quite big one, as it is written here. For the second case, ideal case B, you can see once again that these values are quite close to each other in individual groups. So I expect that in comparison with ideal case A for ideal case B, there is small the same group variance. And the question is, how big is so-called between group variance? It means the second source of variance. So first one is the same group, and the second one is between group variance. So let's go to the next picture. And here it is. So for the ideal case A on the left panel, you can see that all averages or all means are the same. And if I would compute variance for these individual means, it would be zero. So there is no between group variance or between group variance is zero. Uh, this is uh, the minimum for variance, as you know from previous lectures. For ideal case B, if I compute means, so these red crosses represents means, you can see that if I would compute variance, it means differences for these individual means for group one, two, and three, this is quite big value. So it would be big between group variance. So this is the logic of analysis of variance. We divide variance into two sources, between group and descent group variance. And the basic idea and basic formula behind, it is slightly more complicated, but uh, it's enough uh, for uh, the first insight is that you divide between group variance and the same group variance for ideal case A and ideal case B. If you go back for ideal case A, between group variance is small or it is even zero. And zero divided by something should be zero. For ideal case B, uh, between group variance is quite big one and the same group variance is quite small one. And if you uh, divide big value by small value, you will get big value. So the ratio of two sources of variances can be used for finding differences for means. This is the basic idea behind analysis of variance. That's why we call analysis of variance uh, as we are analyzing two sources of variance, but we are substantively discussing about means. So here are two competing hypotheses uh, in analysis of variance. Zero uh, hypothesis says that means for all groups are equal and the whole population to which uh, we generalize our results. So it means all means are the same for the population, says no hypothesis. An alternative, and be careful here, is not that all groups have different means, but at least two groups are different. Two groups can be different, three groups, etc., etc. As you can have uh, more than three groups, uh, it can be slightly complicated, but alternative only says that at least two groups are different. And it means also that if we reject no hypothesis and accept alternative one, we need to investigate further our results and to find all pairs or two groups that are different. 
we call this procedure and we will uh, conduct, of course, uh, these procedures in SPSS environment as so-called post hoc or uh, multiple comparisons testing. So after the basic analysis of Ryan's test, we also need to perform some following testing, which is called post hoc or multiple comparisons testing. Here you have only example output, excuse me, this in Czech, uh, but uh, uh, this is only uh, example how we can read results uh, from SPSS. So this is the basic table uh, for analysis of Ryan's and there is division into between groups and Bayesian group, uh, so-called sum of squares. Then uh, there are also something what is called decrease of freedom, uh, number of groups minus one and number of uh, units uh, minus uh, number of groups minus one. Uh, then uh, division of sum of squares and degrees of freedom create so-called mean square and ratio of these mean squares. So it is approximately variances is uh, uh, serving uh, uh, by uh, once again division uh, to compute test criterion, which is called F. And here is evaluation by p-value. So here we have sources of Ryan's and here we have the result of the test. And usually in social sciences, uh, we discuss about comparison of this computed p-value uh, and we compare this predefined alpha, it means significance level, usually five percentages, and then uh, we reject new hypothesis if p-value is below expected significance and if it is not, so uh, we usually uh, discuss about retaining uh, or not rejecting new hypothesis. So for this case, for example, uh, it is the problem how often they are uh, using internet. Uh, and I guess uh, that the basic division uh, was by age category. We would say that at least two categories are different in usage or frequency of usage of internet. So uh, the p-value is quite small and we would reject no hypothesis and accept alternative one. At least two groups are different and we need to further investigate which uh, pairs are different and which maybe are not different. So, uh, let's go uh, to last one slide about assumptions and data for analysis of Ryan's. So it is expected that we have one cardinal variable. We call it in analysis of Ryan's as dependent variable it can be, for example, income, uh, life satisfaction, length of education, etc. But it must be cardinal variable as we will be discussing about differences in means and means can be computed only for cardinal variable. And we need second variable, which is dividing our data into groups. It is called usually factor in the context of analysis of Ryan's. It can be level of education, region, type of customer. Uh, once again, uh, remind uh, that uh, for two groups, we would apply so-called two independent sample t-test. And there are three assumptions for analysis of variance that are usually mentioned in statistical literature. First of all, our dependent variable should be distributed normally. So it means uh, that the shape of the distribution should be like bell-shaped curve. If your sample is quite big one, I mean, if it is in hundreds or even thousands of units, normality is not necessary. And analysis variance is called that it is quite robust uh, if this assumption is not met in big samples. Second one assumption says that if you divide data into groups by factor, in individual groups, uh, variances of your phenomenon should be equal or should be the same. We know from discussion about two independent samples t-test that we can recognize whether uh, variances are the same or not, uh, can be done through Levinas test, uh, and uh, the same situation will be applied in analysis of variance. If variances are not the same, we have still some alternative tests, and we will see uh, these tests as so-called uh, Welch test uh, uh, or uh, <coughs> a brown foresight test in SPSS environment. The last one assumption, which must be followed, and there is no exception, is that cases in individual groups 
must be independent. Uh, so uh, there cannot be some relationship for individual cases inside and also outside of these groups created by factor. So all units must be independent. If these units are dependent, for example, you measure uh, by the same measurement uh, uh, individuals twice, uh, three times, four times, so these are totally related data, you must apply some other advanced uh, designs of analysis of variance, and we will not discuss about these topics. So if you would like to apply analysis of variance in a SPSS uh, uh, environment, uh, we would go, or this is the simplest procedure, into analyze, compare means, and one way ANOVA. And we will discuss about this procedure in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, so uh, let's go back into SPSS environment. And uh, we will once again handle our data file, which is ISSP 99CZ short SAV. So the first of all, uh, the analytical task uh, we will discuss. So if I would go back here, we have uh, uh, null uh, or zero hypothesis or uh, alternative hypothesis. And uh, we will discuss about uh, differences for mean income. This is the variable called B41A, the fifth variable in my data set. And we will discuss about differences for means uh, for uh, people uh, that achieve different educational level. And this educational level is defined in the third variable in my data set, which is B8. Before we start the analysis, the first step is to check our variables. And if necessary, uh, we need somehow to transform our data, exclude missing values, etc. As uh, we have discussed about these variables, uh, we can prepare these uh, uh, operations very easily and very quickly. For the variable B41A, we know from previous discussion there are at least three strange values. These are zeros, so it means if somebody is not economically active, he or she doesn't have any income, so we should exclude these values. And we can also see there are some strange values such as 6 times 9 and also 6 times 8. If I go into description for my variable, 6 times 8 means DKNA, and 6 times 9 means deny to answer. So zeros, 6 times 8, 6 times 9 should be omitted. So let's prepare this procedure. So we will go into variable view window, and uh, the fifth row and missing values, and here we would omit zeros, 6 times 8 and 6 times 9. So here it is. And now the variable for personal income should be prepared for data analysis. The second variable we should also prepare for data analysis is B8 level of uh, highest education. So before we start, I would only quickly show frequency table for this variable. So here it is, frequencies B8, click into OK. And uh, after running this procedure, uh, we can uh, read the results. So you can see there are quite many categories, incomplete basic up to completed university, also one respondent uh, with the response and A. Uh, is this not defined as missing values? Before we will go further, uh, we will once again repeat that for analysis of variance, especially if we have enough cases, we don't need to discuss about normality of dependent variable. And enough cases, uh, according to data simulations, means to have at least 30, or some people says at least 50 cases for different groups. And as you can see, for example, incomplete basic education uh, is here represented only by 18 people, incomplete university by 36 people. So first step here in this analysis to be sure and not to inquire data uh, in further details, 
would be maybe to omit some categories that I quote there, or maybe somehow collapse or merge categories. I would propose here uh, to merge categories into four groups, incomplete basic plus basic education, and we would call it simply only basic or elementary education. Maybe then we can also merge vocational and secondary without diploma. And in the Czech educational system, it means it is secondary without uh, diploma education. Then vocational visa diploma, general secondary visa diploma, and incomplete university, we can merge together once again, and it would be secondary education visa diploma. And the last one, tertiary education, represented by completed university, and NA would be omitted. So we will repeat the procedure of recording. So let's go into transform record into different variable and we will take the third variable which is highest education b8 and we will create new one variable and i would call it simply as only b8 and extension rec as recorded clicking by change we will uh, uh, add this uh, assignment so from b8 we will create b8 recorded and by all the new values we find, uh, we define rules for recording so first of all codes one and two so it means this range from one through two will be recorded as code one it will be elementary education the next one would be three and four it will be recorded as code two in our education without a diploma, then five to six, uh, five to seven, excuse me, five through seven, go three, secondary education with diploma, and the last one, it's not range, it's original value, eight, uh, university education, we would call tertiary education, go four. Click into add, continue, okay, and here we can check that we have new variable B8 recorded. Let's go into variable view, only add some values, uh, labels. So first one uh, would be one uh, elementary. Second one would be secondary without diploma. The third one would be secondary this diploma and the last one for category number four would be tertiary education so add okay and the last one step is once again to prepare frequency tables so not only for original variable but also for new variable and check whether it is correct so we merge first two categories, 18 plus 287, 305. Uh, completed university, 169. Tertiary, 169. Uh, then we merged uh, 480 vocational and 268, 745. Uh, and two missing values, and A and system missing value 1 and 1 uh, creates 2, so it seems correct. So uh, we are prepared for data analysis, so I will erase previous outputs and go once again back uh, into SPSS environment. So we have prepared our data, definition of missing values, uh, recorded uh, education level. And now the question is whether we can find for different education levels, different level of mean uh, for personal income. I guess that our expectation is that we can expect that if the education is increasing, income is also increasing, but let's see how it works through analysis of variance. So let's go into analysis of variance, compare means, and the last one dialog here is offering one way ANOVA. I would like only to say that currently I'm using SPSS 26. If you are using newer version, currently uh, there is uh, 27 on the market. Uh, the dialogue is slightly more complicated uh, than mine. So this is only very simple dialogue uh, from previous versions. So here we need to define dependent variable, at least one, 
n independent variable or so-called factor. So here we would define income and here we would define educational level. So income and educational level recorded last on variable in my data set. So before we uh, go further, uh, we would click into options and we would ask at least for some basic results. First of all, I would ask for descriptives. So it means that SPSS will compute for me means standard deviations and also number of respondents for different groups. So I would have description of my data also included in results from this dialogue. Uh, then the next uh, box that will be checked uh, for analysis is homogeneity of variance test. So it means that Levenas test, as we discussed about assumptions, will be also performed. It is not default in SPSS, but we should also uh, check results of this test and decide if Levenas test will say, okay, it seems that the variances for individual groups are the same. There is no necessity to change the dialogue further. If variances won't be the same, we would apply one of following tests, which is uh, offered here, brown foresight or Volk test. But we don't know uh, before the analysis is proceeded, uh, so we will not check these dialogues uh, for this moment, and we will go back, if necessary, to this dialogue. I would only mention that we will also need uh, to follow this dialogue for post hoc or multiple comparisons, if necessary, once again. So let's wait uh, for uh, our results and then we will go back to this dialogue maybe repeatedly. So clicking by OK, we will proceed the analysis itself. Uh, but excuse me, uh, maybe I didn't uh, check uh, the dialogue uh, for options. Yeah, sorry. Once again, descriptives and homogeneity variance test. So once again, clicking by OK, and now uh, it is the full output uh, we would like to check. First of all, descriptives uh, for our results. So it means here we have means, standard deviations, also confidence intervals, minimums and maximums for individual groups. And of course, that everything is computed for income. So for example, you can see that for the first group, elementary educated people, uh, the mean or average income is approximately 6,000. It is everything measured in Czech crowns. For secondary uh, education without diploma, 8,700 approximately, nearly 10,000 for secondary with diploma, and 14,000 and approximately one half more for tertiary educated people. As you can see, there is very strong tendency here uh, of increasing averages for income uh, if you go to bigger categories of educational level. So it means that we expect for analysis of Ryan's, we will reject no hypothesis and we will accept alternative, at least group groups are different. And maybe if we would compare also individual values, individual pairs, we will also find differences for all these pairs that are present in my data. Here you can see also standard deviations. Once again, assumption for analysis of variance, or at least one assumption is that variances should be the same. And as you can see, standard deviation for elementary education for income is slightly more than 2000, but for tertiary educated is 9000. So we can expect that if we would perform leaving as test, this is the next table, we would reject no hypothesis of equality of rights. So let's go to the next table. Here we have leaving as test. Uh, there are three uh, or four versions in SPSS. Previously, there was only one, uh, but uh, we can take only the first row from this table. So it means uh, apply this test on means, as uh, we are discussing about cutting variable. And as you can see, uh, Final results from this test is very small p-value and uh, no hypothesis of this test, as you know from discussion about t-test, is that all varieties are the same and at least two different is alternative. 
So alternative seems probable here. And that's why it is not possible to read further table as this classical analysis of variance test is based on the assumption of equality of variances. But variances are not the same. So we need some alternative test. Let's go back to analysis of variance dialog, once again into options, and we need to choose Brown foresight or Wach test. Uh, as we performed in uh, t test, usually Wach test, I would propose also to apply Wach test here. Results for these two tests are very close to each other, so let's perform Wach test uh, for this occasion. And let's remember that variances for individual groups are not the same for our data. It means income by levels of education. So here it is. And once again, we do not read this classical analysis of Ryan's table, but we instead of it read and interpret this new one table, which is called robust test of equality of means. And here we have Welch test as uh, one of the classical tests. So here is test statistics. Test statistics for this test uh, follow so-called F or Fisher's distribution, uh, which is related uh, to two degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom number one, number two. These degrees of freedom are based on number of groups minus one, four groups of education minus one means three. And the second uh, degrees of freedom is uh, quite complicated, so we will not uh, go into details. But here we have p-value. Once again, these are two competing hypotheses. All means are the same. And alternative says at least two groups are different. As the p-value is very low one, we would in classical data analysis say, OK, H0 is maybe not my favorite. And I would say that I would reject null hypothesis and I would accept alternative one. So maybe at least two groups are different. So it means maybe that two groups from these four educational groups have different average income. That's my first and I would say preliminary conclusion. So this test is not the final test but I would call it preliminary test. In the case that p-value would be big one, we wouldn't reject no hypothesis, we wouldn't continue at all, and it would be our final conclusion. But if we would say, okay, it seems that at least two groups are different, we need to go farther. Farther uh, by so-called uh, alternative uh, post hoc testing uh, or multiple testing. Uh, uh, so we will discuss about this multiple testing in next few minutes. So once again, let's go back into the dialogue for analysis of variance. And uh, last one dialogue uh, we will visit for this one way ANOVA would be post hoc comparisons. Here we have two big parts. First one, the upper panel is called equal variances assumed. The next one is called equal variances not assumed. Once again, according to our results of Levinas test, variances are not the same. So we shouldn't apply this test and we should apply one of these tests. As you can see, there are a lot of tests here included. So my general recommendation. General recommendation is following. If variances are the same, according to Levinas test. Let's apply this REGWQ test. It is one of the most uh, general tests uh, you can apply. If equal variances are not assumed, this is our case, let's apply games howl test. Once again, quite general test. Of course, there exists some special situation in which other tests that are offered here uh, can be applied, but we wouldn't go into details. Significance level for all these tests together, as we will test all possible pairs, will be held on 0 0.05 or 5 percentage level. If you would like to change it, you can change it here. And uh, now we will, of course, ask SPSS to show us all possible comparison. The question is, 
how many pores can be created if we have four groups, uh, four groups that are prepared by four educational levels. So let's try to compute in your head and I can uh, uh, give you a hint that number of groups, uh, number of pores that are compared uh, if you have K elements can be computed as K multiplied by K minus one divided by two. So in our case, four divided by three divided by two, four uh, multiplied by three, excuse me, four multiplied by three, it is 12 and 12 divided by two is six. So in final table, uh, we will check six per six uh, per comparisons. So click into continue and okay. So here we have new table, which is offering not only six, but unfortunately 12 comparisons. Once again, uh, in newer versions of SPSS, uh, it is already solved, uh, so we will not see 12, uh, but only six comparisons. As you can see here, for example, the first row is comparing elementary and secondary without uh, diploma education. But also here uh, on the uh, fifth row, you can see the same comparison only uh, reverse category, secondary without diploma and elementary. So from these 12 rows, it is enough to read only six as uh, every row is once again repeated. So let's read in detail the first row. Uh, so it means first comparison, elementary educated versus secondary without diploma educated. And then we will very quickly read all the rest. So every row here is only comparison of two groups first one it is written what is the difference for means so it means if there is minus 2500 approximately it means that elementary educated in or average uh, by 2500 uh, crowns less than secondary without diploma so this is descriptive statistic here is standard error and we know that if we divide mean uh, difference by standard error we can test uh, statistically this difference and it is applied here in this significance column so this is computed p-value and as it is low we can conclude about this difference for every row there is null hypothesis that for these two groups means it means mean income here uh, are the same. Alternative is they are not the same. And as the p-value is low, we can conclude that it seems that for the Czech people, elementary educated and secondary without diploma educated people uh, do not have the same average income. So that's my conclusion here. So this is statistical test. And for those who do not favor statistical tests or for those who would like also to see confidence interval, there is also confidence interval for this mean difference. So for the whole population, it can be 3,500, but also it can be only, let's call it only 1,500. So this is confidence interval. So for the first row, for the first comparison, we can conclude that we have found statistical significant difference. We can also check all the rest. And as you can see, for all these comparisons, we can see small p-values. You can also check that for the first column, there is symbol of small star. And small star means that mean difference is significant at five percentage level so maybe it is not even necessary to read this significance uh, column and only find whether there is a star or sometimes it is called asterisk uh, in uh, statistics uh, uh, and if there is there is statistical significant result so my conclusion is that all groups all these pearls are statistically different. So once again, not only by descriptive statistic, we have found that elementary educated people uh, income is the lowest by their mean, uh, the second uh, and their education without diploma, the second lowest, uh, the second highest secondary visa diploma and the highest for tertiary, but 
Also, um, by this multiple comparison testing, we have generalized these results to the whole population. It means to all Czech uh, adult people that are economically active. So for all these groups, results are different. The last one question that can be related uh, to analysis of Ryan's is, what is explanatory power of educational level for income? It means what is, in other uh, words, substantive significance, whether there are these differences huge or small one. Of course, we can read these descriptive statistics, these mean differences. We can also read this confidence interval. But uh, there is also an option uh, how we can, by one figure, evaluate substantive significance of our results in analysis of variance. If you are performing uh, analysis of variance in newer version of SPSS, I mean SPSS uh, 27 or newer, uh, you can find this uh, substantive significance measurement directly in the dialog uh, which we are currently using. It means one way ANOVA. Unfortunately, uh, for older versions of SPSS, it wasn't present, uh, uh, so we would uh, need to go to other dialogues. Uh, so I would go into uh, Analyze, Compare Means, and the first one dialog, which is called simply Means. Here, if you define the same task, so it means income as dependent and uh, education level as independent variable, we can go into Options. And here you can ask also for analysis of variance and also for the table of so-called ETA. ETA is uh, so-called effect size or measurement of substantive significance uh, for analysis of variance, or it is only one measurement, uh, but uh, it is the most common measurement of substantive significance, or sometimes it is called also effect size. Click into continue, click into OK, and let's see how it works. So here we have ETA and also ETA squared. Very simple interpretation of this ETA squared as effect size is flowing. You would take ETA squared multiplied by 100 and you can interpret it uh, in percentages. So in our case, 0.119 multiplied by 100, and I will slightly round up, means it is 12 percentages. And correct interpretation is that 12 percentages of differences for income, it means for dependent variable, is influenced by education level. So it means differences in income are caused by education by 12 percentages. The rest, 88 percentages, are influenced by another phenomenon. You can imagine that other phenomenon that can influence income is, uh, for example, uh, years of practicing of your job. Uh, also, it can be influenced. It's not uh, very nice, but it can be influenced uh, by gender uh, of respondent. It can be also influenced uh, by uh, branch of economics in which uh, you are employed. It can be also influenced, for example, uh, by the place uh, in uh, which uh, you are employed. For example, in big cities, incomes are bigger than small cities or villages, etc., etc. But once again, our level of explanation is 12 percentages. The rest is not explained by our model. We can conclude our analysis. So this is the meaning of eta squared. Uh, instead of eta squared, uh, currently uh, literature recommends to use uh, so-called highs omega. Uh, we will not uh, compute this as uh, it would be complicated uh, in older versions of SPSS. But once again, for the new version of SPSS 27 and for all uh, newer versions, uh, uh, highs omega is also offered. I will only uh, give you a hint how ETA squared is computed. Uh, so you can check it. Uh, if you would like to compute ETA squared, uh, uh, you would take uh, between group uh, sum of squares and divide it by uh, uh, total uh, 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 <coughs> 
uh, some scores which is offered in previous table. So this is how we can compute eta squared and eta is only square root uh, from this eta squared, but usually for interpretation, we applied eta squared. So that's all about uh, our analytical task. So once again, we were successful in explaining approximately 12 percentages of differences for income. The rest is unexplained and may be caused by another factors. So that's about uh, analysis of variance. Uh, if we would uh, perform analysis of variance uh, for more factors, we would apply so-called two or three factors, etc. analysis of variance. If you would like to perform such procedures, you would go into analyze, so-called general linear model. And if you have only one dependent variable, you would perform univariate analysis of variance. If you would simultaneously test more dependent variables, you would apply so-called multivariate general linear model. And if you would repeatedly measure the same people by the same phenomenon, you would apply so-called repeated measures general linear model. So these are some advanced options for analysis of variance, but we will not go into these details. I would go once again back into the presentation and will give you uh, some uh, uh, other uh, insight. Uh, so uh, I would uh, tell you uh, final uh, information about alternatives to t-tests or analysis of variance in so-called non-parametric procedures on non-parametric tests. So if you have data that are not cardinal but are ordinal, or if your dependent variable is cardinal, but you have a small number of cases uh, and uh, your variable is not normally distributed, you should switch from this so-called parametric test to so-called non-parametric. Parametric means that you expect uh, that data uh, follow some assumption. Non-parametric means you do not have such assumptions. So. Alternative to two independent sample t-test, once again, for ordinal dependent variable or for cardinal dependent variable with a small number of cases and non-normally distributed beta is so-called man witness test. If you have two related samples, the second row of this table, alternative for PERT t-test is so-called Wilcoxon test for two PERT samples. For more independent samples, then two, uh, alternative to analysis of variance is so-called kruskal wallis test. And if you have more uh, related samples, alternative uh, to repeated measurement, uh, generally in a model, is so-called Freeman test. Uh, I will show you only quickly where you can find these tests uh, in SPSS environment. If you would go into analyze, uh, there are uh, special tests uh, which are uh, in the special category that are called non-parametric tests. So if you would be treating uh, independent samples, two or more, you would go into independent samples. If you would treat related samples, you would go into related samples. You can use also legacy dialogues. It means here we have individual uh, tests uh, for individual cases. So I would show only quickly where you can find tests uh, for two or more independent samples. It means alternative to two independent samples t-test or to analysis of variance. So if I would go into independent samples, uh, I would say that I would uh, uh, customize analysis and then you would go into fields. Here, test fields, it is the same meaning as dependent variable. So for example, for our case, I would take income and uh, groups, uh, I would take uh, recorded uh, education and by settings you can select uh, which test you would apply so here you can click into customize test and for two groups you would select man witness you for two samples this is the test which is comparing not averages or means but instead of averages or means uh, non-parametric tests are treating comparison of medians and if you would like to compare more than two groups, this would be our case. So let's try uh, to apply this. You would perform Kruskal-Wallis 
van ve uh, ANOVA. So it is non-parametric alternative, once again, not comparing means or averages, but comparing uh, medians. And you can also automatically add multiple comparisons, all, none, or step by step down, but uh, we will not use the specialty. So if we would like to use alternative for analysis of variance, once again, here it is uh, the third row called C, more independent samples, we would apply Kruskal-Wallis test. So these are alternatives uh, to classical uh, parametric uh, tests. Uh, so I will click into run. And we will see a uh, slightly uh, different dialogue. Uh, so currently, uh, I do not see anything. So I would go once again back. Uh, so yeah, here it is. So it is computed. Uh, it only took some time, so I would close it. And uh, here we have uh, the basic results. So here it is. This is the basic result. Total N. 854 people and uh, final result once again the basic uh, uh, hypothesis uh, for cruise probability test uh, are uh, null hypothesis not about means but about medians so medians for all groups are the same so i would uh, rephrase it uh, and at least two groups are different in medians uh, would be uh, correct uh, not for ANOVA but for Kruskal-Wallis test uh, usually we apply KW as shortage so at least two groups are different this is the first result you can also see uh, that in the first table this test uh, uh, helps you uh, to interpret results says reject null hypothesis as the p-value is low and you can also see uh, some chart which is describing uh, different groups. Uh, and last one, table uh, is provides comparisons. As you can see, only six are here. So this is quite new procedure. And you can see for all pearls, statistical significance uh, or p-value is quite low one. So we can once again conclude that all groups, but currently not by mean income, but by median income are different. You can also check graphical result. Uh, and if there is link between these uh, pros, so it means that result is statistical significant. So that's uh, the next uh, output. Uh, and here you have only distribution of uh, values for dependent and independent value as supplementary output. So this is brief information about so-called non-parametric tests. Uh, so I would go once again uh, to this slide. And the last one is uh, to assign uh, your next homework, which is related uh, to analysis of variance. So let's take uh, one cardinal variable or ordinal variable with longer scale. And uh, let's take uh, one variable which is nominal or ordinal with more than two categories. So it means at least three categories should be defined. And let's perform analysis of variance. If necessary, of course, merge some categories. If necessary, use alternative robust tests such as Volch or brown foresight test. Let's apply multiple comparisons and finally interpret results about differences. Maybe if necessary, or you can try it, you can also apply Kruskal-Wallis test as the second one uh, alternative uh, for analysis of variants. So I thank you for your attention. Uh, this is uh, the end of the lecture related to analysis of variants.